Hey guys. Uh, this is my first time actually being in like on the stage, but I couldn't pick a better film to Q&A than Power Rangers. It freaking rocks. Um, the first thing I want to say is a shout out to the Power Morphicon because I've had this print. I bought it for like a hundred bucks off some fan site when I was like 12. Fox didn't have any prints. So you would not be here unless some dude just scammed a print and sold it to me when I was like 12. So, you're here now, we're about to watch the movie on film, not on that really bad DVD transfer. That we look like we're watching a horror movie. But there's two things we have to give shout outs to. Power Morphicon, I think a lot of you might have saw their Facebook posts, their tweets. Um, Scott, who's the runner of that. Um, yep, stand up, clap, yeah. and started promoting it, and uh, the Morphicon is coming up uh, next August, the 22nd to the 24th, I believe. And we actually have a couple passes. It's pretty much a convention that's like Comic-Con, but just for Power Rangers, where any of them from any season are pretty much there. Yeah. So, you know, give or take. Um, so, uh, we have a couple passes to give away. And then I'd also like to say that I reached out to a couple of the Rangers, like Amy and Jason, who just gave me like crickets. Um, I reached out to David Yost, but he already had a commitment. But I'd like to say I Facebook messaged Steve Cardenas, and within an hour, he already responded and said, hell yes, he was gonna be here. And um, before we bring him up here, we actually, he has a couple giveaways, some signed photos, and we also have two passes to the Morphicon. Um, so everyone who has Twitter, you need to get on Twitter. I know, it's one of those things. It's one of those things, but if you get on Twitter and you follow him at Steve Cardenas PR, then the first two followers get the autograph picture and a pass, and the second one gets an autograph picture and a pass after the Q&A. So if you go on Twitter right now and you follow Steve Cardenas PR, <laughs> then unfollow and refollow. <laughs> Cheat. <laughs> Just cheat it. So, but I think it's time we need to bring him up here, get some questions, grill him, secrets, whatever. <laughs> Mr. Steve Cardenas. Hey guys, what's up? How's it going? Everybody, let's say it. What time is it? Four oh, that was weak. Hold on, let me show the video first. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what time is it? It's four time! Yeah, that's what's up. All right. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> okay, thanks, guys. Good night. <laughs> All right, dude. So I think you were telling me it's been like 15 years since you've seen this? Yeah, since I've actually like seen the whole movie all the way through, it's probably been, yeah, since... I like the show, probably, yeah. Wow. Um, when was the last time you saw any of the episodes that you just, you know, pulled an all-nighter and watched, like, season two? Well, actually, pretty recently I've seen some episodes because um, I did a, uh, we did an interview for the Shout Factory who did all the whole box sets. Yeah. So uh, they gave us a box set, so I have all of the seasons that I was in. So I threw some in and checked some out, so, but not that many, just a few. All right. Um, all right, so you were brought in season two, as we all know, but in your contract when you signed on to do season two, mm -hmm. did you sign on to do the movie as well, or did you did that come a little bit later? Well, that, how that happened was, you know, obviously when they, they, when they were looking for new rangers, I lived in Texas, Woo. and um, I, went, I, I heard about this audition, and um, I just decided well, I'm going to go for it, because they were looking for people that knew how to do martial arts and gymnastics, so I said, whatever, I'll go try it out. When I got there, it was like American Idol. There was like 4,000 people there, you know, just like a whole sea of people. I was like, I'm like, wow, this, nothing's going to come of this. And it was like, when I got in there, there was like three judges at a table. And um, I just went and did my thing. And they're like, well, don't call us. We'll call you. And a couple days later, they actually called me back. And um, they said, we want to bring you out to California to meet the producers and um, nice. audition for them as well. And, you know, we'll see what happens. So I, I went and auditioned for them. And uh, then the next day, they were like, well, you're hired. And, um, we don't have any time for you to actually go back home and get your clothes. you got to have your clothes mailed to you because we got to start shooting right now. And I said, oh, and by the way, we're going to shoot for like a month and a half. 
and then after that we're going to shut production down because we're going to go to Australia to do a movie. So I'm just like, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like two years like, ago, happened, though, and yeah. like overnight, so... Yeah, we did, um, I don't know, we shot a whole bunch of episodes in a month and a half. We were working like seven days a week for, yeah. for like 90 days straight or something like that. Alright, so the movie is kind of like shrouded in a little bit of secrecy because it was reshot a lot. Marisha, Marishka Hargate was originally Dulcia, which I think might have been a better choice. Well, actually, um, sorry, I'll, I'll correct you on that, because um, Dulcia was the original Dulcia. She was hired originally to do it, and she had some kind of like cyst on her ovary or something like that, had to have surgery, and then she was out. So then they quickly like replaced Mar uh, her with Marishka Hargate, and then you know, they were they had a whole different storyline that they were that they were filming, and um, and they didn't really like the direction that it was going, and they didn't really like Mariska. It didn't seem like it was a good fit. So when the, when Gabrielle got better, they actually brought her back, and then they they reshot. We reshot like half the movie. Wow. Um, yeah. And didn't you say that you actually you stopped filming part of the movie, then you reshot or you shot new episodes of the show in Australia? Yeah, yeah, because when we, we yeah, when when they shut the movie down, they said, look, we're gonna we're gonna scrap half the movie, we're gonna reshoot it. Um, the, you know, we, uh, that was cutting into the time that we had to go back to you know to start the new season. So they were like, well, you're gonna have to film them here. So we filmed a bunch of mo uh, episodes in Australia. I don't know if you remember the episode when we went to Australia. Yeah. That's we were in Australia all right. <laughs> And then there was another one where we went back in time, and it was like we were in the colonial period. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They had, um, they, you know, they out, out there they had like this, you know, like colonial Williamsburg here, you know, but it was like the one they have for over there. And um, so we were in like, you know, eight, you know, eighteen hundreds, you know, us uh, Angel Grove in the eighteen hundreds or whatever. It was like <laughs> colonial times or seventeen hundreds or whatever. Is there any kind of deleted other scenes that you know lines that got cut, memories that were filmed that just we have a pretty bare bones DVD. I think it's time for a Blu-ray. I don't know why, yeah. but um, any other scenes that were cut? Or well, there was well, there was a lot of our fight scenes that was cut. You know, like the whole fight scenes with the ooze guys. I mean, I was did so much way more cooler shit than you guys see on that thing. <laughs> They had to, but you know, they had to cut it all out because it was too violent. You know, they were like, "Oh, you can't be kicking them, you know, too, in the face too many times." Like <laughs> so, um, you know, like there's a there's a scene where, like, I don't know if you see the scene where, like, the the two rangers like kick the ooze guy in the head and his head goes, Whoop, you know, like that. You know, guys remember that? You'll see it later. But originally they had it. They they kicked him and his head splattered and exploded like, oh. you know, it just oof, went everywhere. It was pretty crazy. Um, but they were like, "Oh no, we can't do that." Dude. The four year old kids are gonna be fucking losers. <laughs> So you started on season two, then you did the movie. How long was it, you know, in between two, the movie, and then season three? You know, were you filming three already while the movie was, was out? No, 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 no. We just, um, I don't know, they just, uh, no, I don't know, actually. I, it's, I can't remember now. It's kind of weird because honest. we get the ninjetti powers on the show, but it kind of makes the movie a little pointless, or, you know, the other way around, because we have to see you get the ninjetti powers twice. Right, yeah, I know. God, I never That's figured that out either. Yeah. Um, <laughs> To be honest, I can't remember. I think that they just, I think that those ones that we did in Australia and stuff were filler episodes for season two, I think, because they just didn't have enough episodes. Yeah. And so I think they, was, was uh, Australia, was that season two or was that season three? Season I can't two. remember. It was season two? Okay, yeah, so there you go. It was filler episodes for season two. All right, so I mean, obviously you left the Turbo, the, the movie that was your kind of final appearance. And, you know, suddenly in the last few years, all these conventions and things have kind of happened where you're reuniting with your cast. So, are you really close to all of them? I mean, you see them at conventions, you're in London, you're, you're going to Brazil, you're just all over the place. Yeah, um, I keep in contact with all of them. Actually, David Yost like, lives right down the street from me. He's like one of my nice. neighbors. Like, he literally, like, I, can, I can like walk to his house if I want. He's, like, he's someone like, you get a beer with? Away. Huh? He's someone you get a beer with? Yeah, sometimes, yeah. He's, uh, and he sometimes he comes over and hangs out at our house and stuff. So he's, he's, I'm real close with him. And then um, I see Karen all the time. Um, they come to my studio, Force Balance Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, sometimes they come and do yoga. Hey, one of my students over there, Jonathan. What's up, buddy? Um, and uh, yeah, um, they, they come and hang out over there and train. Walter Jones comes to my uh, academy and trains Jiu-Jitsu with me. His kids train Jiu-Jitsu with me, too. 
So, uh, yeah, I hang out with a lot of them. I mean, did you have any idea, like, when you signed this up, like you said, it was kind of an overnight thing, they flew you to Cali, then you're in a movie, you're on a show, that 20 years, I guess 18 years later, you would have this sort of, you'd have fans in London where you're going to be in London next week for a convention? Yeah, no, I, I never thought it would be like that. I mean, I knew the show was wildly popular when I, when I got on, started on it, because I knew the show, because it was already been on for a year. But, you know, I never knew that it would last, you know, but that's all you guys. So thank you guys for that, for like keeping it alive and keeping it going. So you can definitely give yourselves a hand for that. It's the dedication of you guys that really, you know, that's really kept it alive and kept it going and, you know. All right, well then I guess it's time for a few questions from the audience. Oh, I see the guy in the red, yeah. Woo. <laughs> oh, just wondering, what do you think Rocky would be doing right now, 20 years later? Um, I think he'd be uh, teaching Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu at a place called Force Balance Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Um, you can look it up at facebook.com slash Force Balance BJJ. Thank you. Uh, uh, next question. Go for it. When, you, you said you were this kid in Texas and now you're in like Australia. You're like, oh, yeah, dude. Like, Dude, are you kidding me, man? I was like, I, I couldn't believe what was happening to me. I was just like, it's so crazy. I mean, you know, because me and Karen and Johnny, um, we all got hired in Dallas. We were, you know, we were living in Texas. We all came from Texas. So we all got hired by the, from the, you know, from the same city, which was very odd because they were auditioning in New York. They were auditioning in Florida. They were auditioning in California all at the same time. And we all happened, the three that won actually all, hop, all happened to be from Texas. So, ooh, Texas, you know? Um, yeah, but uh, we were just like, we couldn't believe what would happen. We were like hugging each other and crying. We're like, oh, my God, I can't believe this is awesome. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty exciting. Yeah, I couldn't believe my luck, you know? Another? Oh, yep. Uh, so, were the putties all like little ninjas, or were they just like extras that are going like this? That's a good question. They had, sometimes they put extras in the, in the, in the putty costumes to kind of just move around like that. Going up. But most of the time, it was the Japanese stunt guys, a, a, a stunt crew called the Alpha Stunt Team. And they are amazing. Any of the stuff that you see us in the helmet, that's all alpha stunts. We never did any stuff in the helmets. Um, they did that for a couple reasons. One, because um, they didn't want us to get hurt. Um, and the other reason was because we had to crank out so many episodes so fast, we had two units going at the same time. All the helmet people were doing stuff, you know, at the same time that we were in the command center filming stuff, you know? Or at, at, you know, at the juice bar or wherever the hell we were. <laughs> Oh, man, I missed that guy. He's so awesome. All right, another? Yep, right there. Oh. No, nobody got questions? Oh, right here. oh, there we go. <laughs> way in the back, way in the back. Dude, way in the back. So, um, I actually would like to get your perspective on uh, the whole David Yoss controversy from a few years ago, these uh, reunions and such, because of the fact that uh, basically you constantly gave back all those interviews. That's a tough question. Yeah, I mean, that's a tough question for me because um, I never saw that, you know what I mean? Like, I think it was, you know, I, um, I think it was more like, you know, um, like they were, I don't know, I think they were just kind of, I don't really know, to be honest, you know, because I, I never experienced that. So the stuff was, was lost on me because I was always like, you know, I was like a 22-year-old kid. I was out partying all the time. Like, yeah, you know, so I didn't really see a lot of that behind-the-scenes stuff with that. Um, but, you know, if he said that's what happened, then, you know, the, you know, that's definitely what happened, and it's definitely not right, you know? Um, so, you know, I have my issues with some people, you know, in, in, you know, in the you know, production side of everything too, you know, which is why I left when I could have stayed on for one more season too. But, you know, yeah, I mean, if that's what happened, I mean, I, you know, it's definitely not right, I think. Yep. Best uh, fight scene accident story? Oh, okay, I got a good one. In the movie here, you'll probably watch it. Um, it's when, uh, <clears throat> uh, then when the when the Tengu warrior the the, the Tengu birds are, are flying in on uh, um, and, and where the wherever the rocks are you know the, where the ocean was crashing against the rocks when it was on Phaedos or whatever, um, there was uh, one of the stunt guys who was like flying in on this wire and Jason Frank is supposed to kick the guy right, and Jason Frank is like you know he's got good kick, good control of the kicks you know because we're trained how to do that, 
And uh, the, st the, uh, the stunt guy kept going, no, mate, no, mate, you need to kick me harder. You need to kick me harder, right? <laughs> and uh, Jason's like, no, dude, I don't want to do that. And he's like, no, you got to kick me. So he would do it again. We did the scene like over and over and over again. He just kept pulling the kick, pulling the kick. Finally, the guy was like, no, man, I really want you to kick me. You got to make believe it, right? So this guy's hanging on this wire, and Jason Frank throws this flying sidekick at this guy, like Chuck Norris style, like as hard as he could. And then they're all cut, and you see this guy just hanging. Like this. Can't move, can't breathe, like crushed it, like practically like crushed the sternum because the was like, hey, man, told me to do it, you know? He kept begging me to do it. So you know, I think he really regretted that one, to be honest. Like two more, I think, right here. Well, my favorite moment is when you became a werewolf, but I want to know when your favorite moment was. That, that was a fun one, actually. Um, you know, it's like, because they, they, they told me how to do an English accent, and then, uh, you know, I got to get into makeup and do the werewolf. Uh, that was a fun one, and then, you know, I like Zeo, because Zeo, like, they really kind of let my character kind of come out a little bit. I didn't have to kind of be Jason, Jason, you know, not Jason Frank, but Austin St. John's, like, you know, clone. So, um, you know, they really let my character develop. So I think there was the one where I became a plant too. That was kind of fun, you know. And I was like getting on the pink ranger. I'm like, hey, you got nice stems there. <laughs> Got nice leaves. By the way, was, was that ever weird? Because you kind of stole Austin St. John's role, and then you reunited with the guy in Zio. Was there ever any kind of like hostility? No, no, not at all. You know, I mean, I, I was kind of worried that maybe I was going to lose my job, but they assured me that you know my place was was set, and that he wasn't going to be staying very long. They brought him back for a little bit, and that was it. All right, so. one more. You call it. Uh, this gentleman right here, man. Um, What's uh, up, Blue Ranger? Yeah, um, so how'd you like the transition from Mighty Morphin to Zero Ranger? Because you know how you went from red to blue, so how was that? Um, the only thing I felt like they should have done was they should have like given me a line where like, man, I gotta buy a whole new wardrobe now. <laughs> everything I wore was red and now I gotta wear all blue, but all of a sudden I just had all blue clothes now? <laughs> really? I mean, you know, I think it's funny that, you know, all the characters, you know, were never get figured out, even though we always wear pink or we always wear red or we always wear yellow. <laughs> Come on. So I guess it's time. He has a couple autograph pictures. All right, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's tweet it. Tweet it. Uh, everybody forgot. You guys forgot to do it. Hold on. Let's see. He didn't spell his last name to us. Um. Hold on. Do we have a uh, General Zach? <laughs> no. Yeah, right. Oh, General Zach. There he is. Hey. Uh, Brittany Gamboa. Brittany? All right, come on. Yeah, wow, you're both together. Uh, oh, you guys are together? Oh, Ooh, close right on. Well, congratulations. You guys were the first, first two. So, uh, I've got some uh, autographed pictures here for you. Uh, and uh, some passes to the uh, Power Morphicon next year. Yes, so, let's give these guys a hand. Good Facebook job. Power Morphicon. Cool shirt. All right, guys. Hey, guys, thanks. Thank you all for coming out, man. This is really cool. Thank you. Keep, keep in mind the print. The print you're gonna see is 18 years old, and it's gonna have some scratches, but it's the only one that exists, and you're seeing it. So. Yeah. That's dope. All right.